and good morning, everybody. You are here with Money in the Law, my FM 101.3, coming to you from the New England Bonsai Garden Studio. He's John Drohan. I'm Jay Marsden of the Marsden Law Group, John Drohan and Manifor Financial. And uh, we are coming to you live, well, not live, kind of live, this Saturday. We are alive this Saturday. Uh, <laughs> so talking about all things money, all things the law. Also joining us today, Christian from Holliston Cable Access Television, keeping us not to gain that five pounds on the television. I think he actually, he's got the, the, the other, takes five pounds off. I they have a different camera. It. Yeah, it's a different camera. a different camera. camera. It's a better camera for it's us. A, it's good. It's it, Right. It's the, you know what it is? It's the middle-aged man camera. Oh, yeah. Right. No, yeah. it's the middle-aged man right. camera. It's not the, the, the dad bod camera, <laughs> I think the, the right. kids would call that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The dad, well, I, I heard it's in. I yeah. heard I heard that it's in. It's I heard that, that, that guys are, you know, they're, they're kind of surrendering to the whole, you know, like, you know, reduce my body fat kind of thing and just kind of go in with what they got. Go, that's right. That's right. Go with, is, go, go with what God gave you. Go with, <laughs> go with what God gave you. Right? Yeah, dance with the bear that brung you. That's yeah. exactly right. That's especially as we saddle up to uh, what, a week and a half away from the beginning of my favorite time of the year. We talk about uh, it every the year The beginning of show. June? No. The beginning no. of... The beginning of summer. The set runs with dumber. That's right. That's right. That's right. Memorial Day, right around the corner. That's right. So exciting. I Memor love it. Memorial Day is that's your that's your day. That's you know that's like the, your gateway to happiness. I have, yeah, it is. It is. I there's we have a couple of like fall starts. You know, like say Patty's Day, I get all geared up. Like hopefully the hopefully <laughs> it's start. in the wind, right? Hopefully the winter's behind us. We can kind of focus. Right, on what the we're Kentucky do. Derby fall start, but, right? <laughs> but you know we're in New England, so that's not always true. And then Patriots Day, you get a. You get another kind of another shot at you know this is it we're almost there it's so close. Patriot, well, because it's marathon day, marathon right? So there's some day. yeah, so yeah. people are running like there's activity happening even though this marathon was like a, a oh, bomb a right. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But there's right. no guarantee. There's no guarantees. It could be great. Could be great day weather wise. But Memorial Day, even if it's you know it's thirty pouring. below yeah, and pouring, pouring rain, it's more. Everybody day. says I'll, I'll take a burger, yeah. burger around the grill, nothing like it, over and over and over again. So this is good. You stuff. know where I get to go this Memorial Day, which oh, is detail. yeah, I will tell you. Janet's so so no, I no no this Memorial Day on Memorial Day, I am attending the Holden Memorial Day Parade in the great town of Holden. Really? I was asked by my dear friend and. Uh, selectman Anthony Renzoni, oh, who yep, is the, the yep, Holden yep, Selectman, yep, right? Not, yep. One of your, you know, he's kind of like one of your peers. Compatriot. He's, a, yep. he's in your peer group, right? And uh, and right, and you guys are going to be fast friends. He's called into the show before. Yes, he has. Yes. So yes, he's asked yes. me to come uh, and join him at the Holden Memorial Day practice. So will you be in the VIP area? I, I think I think I'm I think I may get a good seat. I think nice. I might get a now, good seat. Now is he? Seat. My guess would be he's marching in the parade. Is he marching in the parade that day? Uh, he's going to have you in the in the velvet I, I, roped off <laughs> section there with the velvet ropes. I don't think I'm going to be carried in a rickshaw. No, I don't know. Be the guy. Are you walking with him? Uh, I don't think I'm, no, no, I'm not walking. I'm just there You're for just the his guest. I'm there for the ceremony. Yeah, well, I don't, and I don't know ceremonial. if he's going to walk in the. Uh, Anthony's got like 17 children, so nice. I don't know if he actually can walk. Maybe, in the he, maybe he's inviting you to babysit. You have no idea, right? He's like, yeah, hey, John, I'm going to walk in the parade. If you could just keep an eye on this crew right here, yeah. from over here to this one to this one here, That's these funny. are mine. It's funny, like, because I, you know, long before he became a selectman, when I was with him, when he was uh, in my unit in the army, he he was poised for politics he sure. was because he's about 17 feet tall yep. and about eight you know that's he's that guy he's, he's like, a presence he's the biggest guy in the yeah. room right yeah. and the loudest guy in the room and arguably the smartest guy in the room so he'll so not only are you intimidated by his you know his bigness and his like blah, 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 yeah. but he's also you know he'll also try and make you feel dumb like oh, you know that's if, funny. if you're asking for yeah. it oh yeah. oh yeah only for asking only for it for yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so that's my so, so that's getting me pumped up for Memorial Day I haven't nice. been to I've never been to the Holden Memorial Day ceremony but they do a good job so. so we, uh, in Holliston, we, uh, in addition to walking in the parade and doing some more Memorial Day services in the morning, there's always a speech that's given by uh, a member, a, 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 an esteemed member of the Board of Selectmen, and we rotate the speech yeah. uh, every, you know, every Are year you somebody up? else does that. This is my year. You're up. This is my year. Last wow. year, on the fly, we kind of decided that the speech should be given by the outgoing chairperson. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the incoming chairperson, which would be me. So uh, I'm up. I get the nod. So I get to, over the course of the next week and a half, I get to find some quiet time, sit down, formulate some thoughts. What's your, and your paper. time, like 40 minutes? Is that a, a that's, that's become a bit of a bone of contention. <laughs> uh, I've, give, I've been known to give, 45 minutes. I've been known to, to, to take, let's say, a fair amount of time when, the, when, when it's my turn to be in the spotlight. Yep, the my, and you the know how much up. I tend to shy away from that. I, I, I've, so, I've experienced that. So when somebody time. says, you know, Jay, here's a microphone and you get to talk about, well, your favorite topic is yourself. So if you get to talk about something else, but it's still, a, you know, by you, go ha have at it. Yeah. So, so, uh, so Bobby, uh, Bobby Blair, the, uh, the official mayor of Mudville, 
he likes to basically, as I'm walking to the podium, he likes to kind of give me the, you know, let's, Take not, back. let's not be here all day, you know, right. <laughs> tick tock, you know, that's right. things to do. You that's know? funny. That's so funny. he loves it. He sees me come and he rolls his eyes. He goes, you need oh, to, you we, need we to can be here forever. You need to roll in with like 15 pages oh, yeah. of, of j now it doesn't have to be your speech, but just no. like 15 pages. And then while you're on the, like right before you get, just, just drop them. Just, just drop, drop them. <laughs> drop them and be like, oh, oh. And, and then just, and then pick them all up and just say, oh, I'm just going to wing, I'm going to wing my third. My bad. Speech. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. My bad. So that's always good stuff. So, so what do you want to talk about today? I have an idea, but I want to, I want to, I want to hear what you think. <laughs> well, I, one of the things that we, you, you and I discussed actually before we got on the show, uh, before we started is that we were, you know, you know, you see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, you know, on these websites, and it's particularly the financial sites, you see kind of these, you know, financial, you know, nuggets of wisdom, right? Oh, yeah. You see these, these little tidbits, like say, you know, you know, these are five things you need to do, you know, when you, in order to uh, be able to retire at age 50, or these are, you know, make sure you, you know, this, this checklist, these 10 things, and oftentimes they're, they're maddening because they're, they're in the form of a slideshow. So you, you maybe get to the third or the fourth one on, you have to keep clicking oh, yeah. and clicking. You're like, ah, yeah, I've, I've seen enough of this, right? And the whole time that you're waiting for the next slide to load, yeah. you know that there's just nothing but, you know, web stuff, downloading it yeah. onto your computer to click, you know, to track every keystroke that's of right. what you're going to do, right? right? The, the deeper you go in there, the more you're never going to be able to that's climb right. up. That's yeah. exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So for, for those so those who are, who are saying to themselves, what are these guys talking to? Why? They have the, you know, when you go to different websites, they have these basically what I call clickbait, right? Everybody calls it clickbait. That's just me. But so they have. No, these, you made they, that up. They have, <laughs> it's a, it's a uh, mm -hmm. hashtag clickbait. So they have these ads. They have these, these things at the bottom of these different articles that you're reading that say, you know, um, you know, find out why this person no longer works in Hollywood or find out, you know, the, uh, you know, why the golden throated homeless guy doesn't sing out loud anymore. They have these things these that are designed to draw you in. Right. And the, and the minute you click on them, you know, if you're paying attention to your screen at all, you can see like 80 things happening. Somebody's making money. Somebody's getting paid. You know, these these are designed to direct you somewhere. <laughs> and, and to John's point on these financial sites, they have these, you know, Find out why your neighbor's a millionaire and you're not a millionaire, or, or you know what's 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 your what's your brother-in-law doing with his money that you're not to make him so successful, right? And they had these things, so we said, you know what, let's let's take one for the team, right? We'll we'll sacrifice a computer, right, and we'll click on these things and let's kind of unpeel the advice that right. they're giving to find out, you know, just to you know if, if you've ever wondered, oh, I want to click on that, it looks like it could be really helpful. But it could be, but it could be, you know, it could be a, a Russian bot taking over my computer and stealing all my money, right? So, so we did it. We so we borrowed Christian's phone. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not was, doing yeah, that on That's our... right. That's right. And we decided we're going <laughs> to use Christian's home computer. That's right. And we're going to use his phone, and we're going to look at all his these email things. address because you have to put an email address to. That's yeah, right. So that's right. So we, put email... in, we put in Tom's Tom McAuliffe, our fearless leader here. So we are Tom's we, email, and Tom's home phone number. We are well, completely which I'm immunized. About to give out on the air, right? Where we're is com the, yeah, it's right we're completely here. immunized from this entire transaction. <laughs> but what we want to do is we want to say, you know, uh, these little tidbits out there, these little these uh, this clickbait, if you will, are these things either worth your time? Is there some good information to be unpacked in there, or um, is somebody now uh, literally being arrested by the government because they're clicking on sites that somehow link them into some type of Russian oligarchs, you know? nefarious plot to take over Europe and, or something. You know, in, in, in defense of the uh, in defense of the entire industry, right? So the so oh, here we go. in defense of the industry because you know everybody's always like, the oh, diplomat. Well no, I'm not I'm just saying I'm just yeah. I'm looking at it from yeah. why why is it here? Why why are we actually talking about it right yeah. now? Yeah. There's a reason. Because it, it's real and it works. Yeah. And you know when you know we talk about advertising and you know I, I love the uh, it, it recently Zuckerberg Mark Zuckerberg for the CEO and founder of Facebook was testifying on Capitol Hill right remember yep. that yeah and uh, they and uh, Orrin Hatch Orrin Hatch asked him he said so uh, how is it that you guys make money and he goes we sell ads yeah and we sell a lot of ads <laughs> because we make a lot of money. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so this this whole kind of you know this industry of advertising on the internet is it you know and and I'm not I I I don't pretend to be an expert on it, but to me it's it's fascinating and it's a it's a it's a multi kajillion dollar industry. So so all this stuff that you know that that people you know they they get attracted to and they see there's it's not. This isn't arbitrary. They're, they're not arbitrary things. Oh, maybe somebody. Will, they, they know. There, there's, there's documented research and science that says. Oh, you know, of the, you know, ten million people that will actually view this, of that ten million, you know, 
thirteen percent of them, thirteen point seven two nine seven percent of them might do we'll, something. We'll click on it, and yeah. then based on our data, and that's all we have is 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 data piled upon data upon data. That from that, you know, it could it will translate into a a dollar sign or a dollar figure, you know, down the road. And it's like I said, it's not. It's it, it's science. It's a yeah, scientific it's a yeah. yeah. It's a it's a scientific proven formula that people you know I say people companies they invest incredible amounts of money in. So so we're gonna we're gonna support that. Well, <laughs> the, the example the, the example I always use is every once in a while somebody will come to me and they'll say, Hey Jay, um, you know my mother and my father passed away and and we have inherited. And I clicked on uh, lawyer.com. <laughs> <laughs> here you are. And here you are. That's a different. But and we inherited a timeshare. And what can we do with our timeshare, right? And I'll say, well, you know, a bunch of ways to get rid of it. Anybody in the family want it, nobody in the family wants it. I go, all right, we can go into one of these sites and see if we can sell your timeshare. So I will. First of all, Jay looks at, where's your timeshare? <laughs> is it in so, Key West? So, yeah, is it, is, it, is it a Key West timeshare? Right, for, uh, you know what? I can is it a six-week right timeshare right. for Key West? That's yeah, right. you need to unload that thing at cost. Yeah, yeah. that's right, that's right. Right now, let's take it off my hands. So. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll go into, you know, some site, you know, you know sell my timeshare.com or whatever the site is, and, and I'll look at the timeshare. And then what happens for probably the following six months, I am just inundated yeah. with requests to sell my timeshare. The phone rings. I get phone calls from all over the world, all over the globe. This is timeshare, you know? Tommy. Yeah. Uh, listen, I know you're looking to dump your timeshare. We want to buy it. Yeah. Yeah, call me as soon as you can. Is my number. We buy timeshares. Yeah, that's anyway. right. So, so, so the idea is that you know you look at you see some of these ads you see some of these become a millionaire overnight. Let's let's unpack one of them just to see is there any any value or any, any anything in there that's worth it. So I well, okay so we'll start with this one I, this, and this is this is you know this is pretty vanilla um, and this is off the Wall Street Journal site. So oh, so right. you know there you go they, somewhat somewhat of a reputable organization. They're not going to just throw any junk on there. This oh, isn't it's it's, this isn't away, like the but... crazy like giant sinkhole on the Weather Channel like yep. the, like our, or the Weather dot com right. Yep. So this one that I'm looking at right now is uh, my glasses on. These are the five biggest five biggest money regrets Americans have and how to fix them. Ooh, so you think right. so right so so if I if this were me and I were writing this so so oh what are my five biggest money regrets? So you're so 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 get, by by way of context. Sure. So you're sitting home, you're cruising around the computer, you're looking at stuff, you're checking out your stocks on the journal, you want yeah. to smell you're probably reading a pro Donald Trump commentary on there somewhere, right? <laughs> okay, great. So now you see this ad and you're like Ooh, ooh, ooh! What, what are the what are the? I know what mine are. I let's was, see. Let's see I if just, I'm right. Yeah, that's right. Do I line up with the rest of America? Let's yeah. see what's going on. All right, All right. So what do we got? Okay. So here we go. So the first one, <laughs> the first one where you say I should have bought that um, little fruit company that uh, yeah that guy Jobs remember? Then they were on the ropes and they're oh, like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. you know they're saying uh, you know what they're not going to do. I anything. get two computer companies I can pick from. I can pick from Peaches or I can pick up this Apple <laughs> place. Which one am yeah. I going to go with? All right. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't buy that. Right. Um, okay, so the first one, and this actually, this, so this is a financial regret. And I don't know, you know, and this is kind of right in our wheelhouse oh. because, it, and, and the first one is, I haven't saved enough for retirement. I oh. didn't save enough for retirement. We talk about that a thousand times a day. Yeah, so so when, I, when, when people say, you know, I will tell my clients, I will tell my clients, no matter what, you haven't saved enough for retirement. Right. You will never feel, oh my goodness, I've saved far too much for retirement. Unless you knew exactly how long your retirement was going to last and you could do the math and you had X amount of, and you could you could foresee all of the variables that could that are going to happen over the next, the course of your lifetime. See, and no one knows that. No one yep. knows the answer to that. So the idea of I haven't saved enough for retirement is a, is a financial regret. And I, I will... I don't, of course, if I could go back in time, of course, if you and I could go back in time right now, if we could go back 20 years and say, okay, if there's something I could do differently, if I could have saved more money, of course I would save more money, sure. knowing what I know now. Because I know, for, for no other reason, like, how much things cost now, right? Like, how much, like, if I wanted to, you know, you've always, I, didn't you always think, I mean, I always did, like, I always thought, wow, wouldn't it be fun to have, like, a, we'd always go to Cape Cod. I would love to have a place in Cape Cod. I'd love to have a place on the water. I'd love yeah. to have a place, you know, on the water where I could overlook, and I'm like, wow, that's, you know, yeah, I, I, may, I may need some money for that down the road, but how much, I mean, to buy a house on the water now in Cape Cod is like, yeah. it's stupid money. It's, it's like crazy money, right? And then, and then who knows if that's exact, if that's what I would have wanted 20 years down there, who knows? So the idea of saying, well, I, if, I, if I could have saved more for retirement, I would have. Yes, I think I would have. But I also, 
I also don't feel like I made poor decisions either. You know what I mean? It's, I don't think I was, I was flippant in my, in, in my, I, I, you know why? Because I was, I was making decisions with the information that I had right. at the time. Right. That's so, a good point. Yeah. so if I, if I, you know, yeah. So if I didn't max out my 401k, there's a reason I wasn't maxed out my 401k. It right, wasn't right. because I was, it wasn't because I didn't believe in the 401k or I didn't believe in saving for retirement. It was because I had to put my money elsewhere. I wanted to buy a house or right. I, or, uh, you know, I was, I was just starting up my business. So I had to, I had to, you know, support my family and my business. Uh, my wife was still in school. We had to pay off her student loans, you know, things, right. things of that nature. So, well, it's funny. So I would build on that and say, you know what, in addition to this, sort of looking back and say, would you have saved more money? I would have saved more money, but I also, and I, we've talked about this in the show before. I think I would have, yes, the 401k and, and tax deferred. I would have saved more money outside of my 401k. I would have sure. made more of an effort to build a parallel portfolio that was not, solely focused on retirement. Right, so, that's so that, thing that, that almost contradicts, well, that that's, because this is like I should have saved more for retirement. Everybody, when they get to retirement, there no one says, ha, ah, yeah. I didn't, I, I saved too much. You yeah, know, I what, probably, do I do? what am I gonna do with all this money? Nah, it's I crazy. Have, I all right, let me go, let me tell you what mine was. I, cause I, I went on a parallel site. All right, all right? so we'll, we'll, we'll go we'll back compare. and forth. We'll go back yeah. and forth, we'll compare. So I, like went on, I went on this one. Although, opinion. speaking of tennis, did you just come from tennis? Because... Uh, golf course, <laughs> yeah, golf course. Why early retirement is all it's cracked up to be, all right? <laughs> Why early retirement is all it's cracked up to be, which no, I don't. I, I don't up. think I need. I don't think you need to say more than that. I mean, like, okay, yeah. Well, I agree. Why is why is not working really good, right? But whatever, that's why fine. It's not a, commuting. It's clickbait. It's clickbait, everybody. So when you click on this, he, so, and, and guess who bit? Right that's here, right, Johnny that's Fisherman that's right, over here. Right. My father yeah. would be so proud of me because he'd click on anything that wasn't moving on the computer. So <laughs> here you go. All right. So here it goes. You will completely lose your purpose in life. All right. Are you saying why is it all it's cracked up or That's why it, it isn't all it's cracked up? This is opinion. Why early retirement is all it's cracked up to okay. be, right? So these are debunking the top five myths oh, I see. I of see. early myths retirement. Of that makes more sense. All right. So debunking. So here's the, here's the first myth. You will completely lose your purpose in life. Now, we've actually <laughs> talked about this on the show yeah. and said, look, there's an adjustment period, right? You, when, you, when you have your head down and you're trying to make the magic happen to provide for yourself and your family and your retirement and your kids and your grandkids and Yes, at some point when you stop and take a breath and say, I think I'm done, there's an adjustment period oh, here, yeah. right? So, so yes. Yeah, you, you have you to know. recalibrate. So are you going to lose your purpose in life? No, but what you're going to feel like is at that moment, whatever your purpose was, which was working and earning a living, mm -hmm. that certainly has that's changed. And if you haven't sort of, we've talked about it before, if you haven't practiced for that transition, then yes, it's a bit of an abrupt change. It's a bit of an abrupt change. But Unless working is really who you are and that's all you are, mm -hmm. when you stop working, you're gonna you're gonna move on and find something else. Well, you see it in the in in the military, right? So, take a guy who or a girl who's in the military for you know twenty plus years, right? And you know the you know in my experience, you know like the it's you know you're full throttle, you know like it, yeah. you're, you're 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 immersed in that, and, and this is not just the military. This is any like you know kind of you know demanding you know uh, any demanding you know calling, right? So in the but I, you know I, I use the military as an example because people retire from the military relatively young, right? Yep. So if you so if somebody is thirty years in the military, they could be retiring in their fifties. You know? Well, in addition to that, it's a real way of life. I mean, you know, it's, it's well, I mean, it, it's it's a different way of life. That's right. That's it's right. A, but, but it's, it, a, it's an all kind of all encompassing all way of life. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I guess I guess my point is, you don't see that as much anymore. You know, people don't become. You know, it's hard to become a life to have to be have a lifetime affiliation with one company, so that you're so. Um, you know that you you sort of personify that company with that's the military. Right. That that can happen or it does happen. Yeah. So you have so people will you know they they retire and 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 it's a it's a big. And, and the military has a has a big transition program. There's a, they have a big you know they've dedicated a lot of resources to the to this kind of post military transition because you know you know not for nothing you're you're you know you eat sleep walk and talk you know military and and the military you know mission and lifestyle and and then particularly as you know as you get older if, as you move up in rank I mean if you're you're a general and you're retiring I mean, generals in the army. Like in when in that in that bubble, right? When you're in that when you're in that space, you're the man or you're the woman. Like you're there's no the most mostly everybody. It's which is why it cracks me up. Like when when you when we talk about guys like John Kelly, you know, or who were you know, or or, or these retired generals that they kind of go into the spotlight in politics. These guys aren't used to being like to kissing anybody's butt. 
they're not used to being uh, they're not used to being like kind of told what to do in a derogatory way right. by anyone younger than them or somebody who's yeah. who who has no who who hasn't doesn't come from the same background that they're yeah, from. There's, there's a change. Those guys right. a little bit of change so, to come in. So, so when Jared Kushner starts like you know pointing his finger at John Kelly, I think I think to myself, I don't. I don't see, you know, General Kelly being like saying, "Oh, sure, Jared, I'd love to hear your opinion about this." Well, I think what I think what Kelly's thinking is, "I could strangle you with your own hair right now," and then by the end of it, I could, that's 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 what I'm trained to do. That right? Yeah. Well, but but not even that. It's like it, I mean, think about it. and and the same thing kind of goes with these, you know, with the guys who real, you know, the, like the big, you know, the, like the chairman of the boards of these companies that kind of then kind of go into these political situations. They go, they're in a different, you know, they're in a yeah. different, a different kind of, you know, fishbowl. And and once they get there, I mean these these are people that used to, you know like hey the boss is here the boss is here and and you know like the, you know the, the the waves like the parting of the sea yeah. like people get That's out of right. the way right? right and and no one talks to him no one looks him in the eye because yeah. because he's they're the, the man. boss they're because they're they're the boss so so this whole idea of you know like if I'm gonna if the, and and I'm using the this is kind of an extreme example so if you're used to that right if that's your and and that be, that's because you know a, a huge part of your life. Is your job? Is your profession right? Well, so, in, many, in many cases, people feel like I'm at the top of my game, right? This is what I've spent my entire think career about it, right? working towards. Why would I want to walk away, right? Yeah. But I guess the, uh, the to, to move back onto one, one more of yours, the idea is, you know, that 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 it doesn't be you don't you don't lose your purpose, right? When you re, you you find it, hopefully, you find a different purpose, right? So yeah. that's that's what you know. Yeah, that's, and 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 the you know, I think the people who do it well. Or, or have an enjoyable experience with it is that they kind of draw from their experience in their professional life, and then they can apply kind of those lessons learned yeah. into their into their now private life, into the you know whatever their whatever their next you know their next obstacle that they're going to take down. Um, but I don't know. It, I think that the you know if, if you're going to if you're retire, I, I I do believe that if you're going to retire early, there's a there's a reason you're retiring early. Sure. You know, so so if if part of that reason is because I you know I just have you know I, I'm I'm so awesome and I made so much money, then you're the kind of person most likely you're the kind of person that is that you're not you, you don't you don't sit there and wallow in your own right. in your own glory like you're you're looking downrange you're looking yeah, like you're looking for a different challenge yeah right and 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 maybe and maybe that challenge maybe all you want to do is is to kind of get to that you know to, I, I i i sell this company and i and i build another company and everybody thinks i'm awesome and it, you know everybody thinks i'm great and everything's so i'm fantastic and that's that's awesome that, that makes me feel good yeah. and that's what I, and and if i make a you know a ton of money along with it I was going to say something else, but I can't say it on TV. Yeah. But a lot of money. Sure. If I make a lot of money doing that, so be it, right? And then, and maybe that makes me feel good too. But there's always, you think that that whatever your next purpose is, whatever whatever it is, most people will have that already identified, or at least what direction they want to head in. Got it. All right. What's your next one? Okay. Talk to me. So my next one, uh, you haven't saved enough money for retirement. Yeah. No kidding. That's a regret. All right. Um, <laughs> And this is ridiculous. Bummer. Go this ahead. next one's ridiculous. Right. So this is why you know we kind of get to these things. And you're like, oh, this is a, you know this is my biggest regret. So I don't I, I I disagree with this one. This says your emergency fund is in crisis mode. Whoa. Right. All right. So so all that translates to to me is that you are spending more than you make. Right. You are you are living outside of your means now. All the people in this room, Christian, Jay, and myself, obviously we never spend more than we make. Never. We stay no, never. within our means. Particularly, yeah. I, I would probably say Christian probably more than you and I, just because Christian's, you know, he's like a true millennial, and yeah. he knows, like, hey, you know what? I need to save money so someday when I start my own, you know, video production company. Because everyone in front of me has ruined the make economy my, for me. That's, that's right, right. That's right. I am gonna. I'm me and my fellow millennial brethren are we'll gonna save fix the it. World. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it because we're smarter. We're smarter than you. All right. So what was your? So what was your? What was your uh, regret there or whatever it was? It, <laughs> my my regret was that. My emergency fund is in crisis mode. Oh no! It means I don't have enough money. It means yeah. I haven't saved enough money. Well, that's which, stupid. which actually goes back to what you talked about before, which is I haven't saved enough for retirement. Right? Yeah. So, so whatever. My emergency fund, and 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 the whole idea of an emergency fund, and and I'm not a big, I'm not. You know, people always say, oh yeah, you need an emergency fund. You need six months of your. I'm like, yeah, I, I that, that's all well and good. I mean, On if paper, I, it sounds great. Yeah, but, it, it, yeah. It, right. It, it sounds good. So I've, I have six months of of my income that I'm going to save in the bank. All right. So if somebody's making good money, right? Right? So if someone's making two hundred thousand dollars a year, so that means I have a hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank. Oh, no. Yeah, like oh. okay, so that's oh. that's great. You have a ton Horrible. of cash, and and what do you? What's your interest rate on that? And and the other thing is, so that means that if I if I get
get laid off from my job, then I'm going to spend the next six months spending that hundred thousand right, doing absolutely nothing. That's right. That's right. Right. And and so if and and maybe that happens. Maybe I'm injured, or maybe you know I don't have discipline, but whatever. But the the whole concept of I'm going to spend a hundred thousand dollars of my money right. in order to support my current lifestyle. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm not going to get another job. I'm not, in order, and and that's the whole six month idea right, of right. my of that emergency fund. Think about what kind of psychological state you're going to be in when you're spending when when you're in when in that account that used to have a hundred now you have you know seven or yeah. six thousand yeah. dollars and then you look back and like wow six months ago when I look at my my statement six months ago I had a hundred and three thousand dollars great in this six thing. month ride this was awesome yeah this was awesome yeah. yeah so so the whole idea of the merge now granted you know emerge we believe in in people having cash but the whole concept of you know, I have to have like all this extra emergency. No, no, no. You have to have money. You, you definitely have an extra. Have to have money, but you have to have money because you can afford to have money. Right. Like you have to have money. And if you if you can't afford, let's say you had to buy a car or you had to put a roof on your house, you had to put a water heater in your house, yeah, right? Yeah. Which happens, right? And do you, have, do you recently have you know what a water heater costs? These days? They're about yeah. ballpark yeah. depending. Yeah. I think the, I think the going rate right this second is probably around a two ish. Two yeah, rand, two, uh, that's two a green ballpark. plumbing and heating. Who yeah. uh, is he a sponsor? Not a sponsor. He, 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 he darn well he should, should be. Should be a sponsor. Absolutely get his should butt be. on the show. Absolutely. Jason JJ, if you're listening right now, because you're probably working on Saturday. You need to come down to the station. Make an appointment. Come down. Jason Green's a good friend of ours, right? So he's also our plumber. Plumber he's, extraordinary. He's the. He could be the. The money in the law. He could be plumber. the official plumber because we're at the New what? England Bonsai Garden Studios. And, they, and, what, and do what do they need? What do they need? Water. I mean, come on. It's, like, <laughs> it's a no brainer. It's almost, like, it's almost like we wrote that before. The Jason, show. you're welcome. You are welcome. Right. Speak well of us, when I'm done. <laughs> so we, All right. So here's another one of us. No, we're debunking early retirement. Wait, we need to take a break. On my side. We, we need do? to take a break. Oh, all right. Take I mean, a break. I mean, I'm exhausted. I know. I know. <laughs> it's Saturday. Debunking all it's these myths. Exhausted. Yeah, we had, I know. Yeah, we, had, we had a softball last. All right. Uh, we'll be right back on Money in Law with Jay Mars and John Droyan, Christian from Hollis and Cable Access TV, here in the New England Bonsai Garden Studio, WMRC, My FM 101.3. We will be right back. And you're back, My FM 101.3, New England Bonsai Garden Studio. You say New Studio. England? You, New said, England? New, you New England? said New England. New England? New, New England? England? New England. Red Rover, Red Rover, blah, blah, blah. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. You know what I wanted to say before? The... It was a funny joke that I didn't, is the, uh, is, is the, the, the dog track connection. Because I know that you grew up like a stone's throw away from that dog track, right? You're not, <laughs> you weren't far away. So the whole like false start, I mean the whole false start thing, I'm just like picturing those greyhounds like yeah, false start. False starting. I'm, I'm just picturing you and your old man like, oh, come on, Jay, we're going to go to the dog races today. Right? And you're like, tracking your old man? <laughs> sure, dad. Sure, dad. Let's go pick the trifecta. Uh, that's sure, right. dad. Yeah, that's no right. problem. Sure. Uh, that's right. That's Money in the Law, my right. FM, Jay Marsden, Marsden Law Group, John Droham, and FM Financial. We are pulling apart uh, to see if there's any value, <laughs> taking one for the team for your operating system on your computer by clicking <laughs> on those little ads that look like there's some, some, some barnacle of truth in them, but you're afraid to click on them because you think that your computer will be affected by Russian bots that will take over your operating system. So we're doing it for you with the computer that we borrowed from here in the office. So if it does create a problem, it's not going to be our Can problem. I just say, Go ahead. Can I just say that, that people right now are listening on the radio, and they're like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I, I was trying to follow you on that sentence, and I'm like, man, that is like so much complicated information. Like, so much information. Yeah, right. so, so, uh, those, so again. In essence, we're, we're looking, we're, we're, we're like trolling websites, and we're like. Well, we're, we're trolling those <laughs> little ads, the clickbait right. on those sites that they look like to the untrained eye that they have Magic. value, yep, that there's some have. valuable information in there. And it's usually like, you know, why did this um, actress, why is this actress no longer hireable in, in, in Hollywood? I and have then next, to know. And then next to it is something about, you know, how to convert your nest egg into five bajillion dollars, <laughs> right? So we're finding out. In six is months. There, is there any value in this clickbait? So, so my, you picked one, I picked one. So the second one I picked was debunking early retirement myths. And the second one was, if you earn money after retirement, then you aren't retired. Now, we've talked about this on the show a thousand times, right? You can retire, and you can I've basically... Heard enough. Like I've, I've, I mean, both of them, like, I'm, like the second thing, yeah. was I'm ready to, like, I'm ready to move on. Like, <laughs> like really? Your emergency, you're going to have enough cash in your emergency fund. Like, whatever. I know, I know, I know, I know. So, <laughs> All right, so go ahead. I so, like this So one. this is, so again, more of us, more softballs, right? So... <laughs> If you if you work after retirement, you're not retired. No, you are right? not. No, you're not. No, 
hey, you know, you, you're walking around the pool down in Florida, you're telling your friends, you know, hey, I'm working as a golf starter over at the golf course, right? You know, because you, you worked for 55 years at Fidelity breaking rocks. Now you're a golf starter, and now what? They're, jeer, they're jeering you poolside because you're not really retired? You're not really retired. That's right. Hey, who's going to go to work today? Not me and no. Gus, but you do because yeah. you're working at the golf course. No, you're not. You're retired. Guess what you're doing? You're working part-time to pay for a little beer money, and that's it. So you're what? Not, or, or, or even better, what if, you're, what if you're working at a nonprofit? What if you're, what if you're, what if you did work for Fidelity for 55 years and you did okay? Yeah. Right? Let's say you've had, you saved some. You put let's a couple say, of bucks aside. Let's say you did start retire, uh, yeah. saving early for retirement because of Fidelity. They, you know, stand over there cracking a whip over you saying, you better put money in your 401k because it's with Fidelity, right? Yeah. You know, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what they did, right? That's exactly they, what they did. That's right. And, and you may thank God for it, right? Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Ned. So, so here you are. You're like, let's say, you know, like, you're like, look, I'm going to work for, I'm working for this nonprofit. I'm going to help out. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make people feel good all day. I'm going to make people say, what a great guy. I'm going to give, give back. Go, no, gonna, imagine that. Go, go, go figure. And, I'm going to give back. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to get paid for it because I don't really need it. I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm good. I'll, I'll figure it out. Right. So, but, oh, I got to be there. I got to be there at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it, you know, it, it comes with a little bit of responsibility. Sure. Yeah. It comes with a little bit of responsibility, which, oh, by the way, which we've talked about before on the show, if you, you know, back Back to this whole purpose thing. If you're going to retire and not do anything, like if you're re you're going to retire and you say, "Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have a plan." I'm gonna, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to get old. You're going to get old fast. Oh, right? oh yes, you're going to you get are. old fast. Particularly if you're kind of in that, you know, in that age bracket of like, you know, my late fifties, early sixties, and you're used to working. You're used to kind of having a schedule. You're used to having. Like just that, you're used to having a purpose of you know this is you know this is where I'm focusing my attention. This is where I'm focusing my energy. And if I don't have that, if I don't do that, then guess what? I'm gonna be like, Ugh, I'm gonna be bumping into walls, or I'm gonna be sitting around doing a whole lot of nothing. And once I do that, then guess what? You know, because you know what happens. Like the the whole an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So if you're gonna sit there and do nothing and not have a purpose, then guess what? You're gonna get old fast. So these people that like that, you know, that and, and in our in our practice, we always tell people like, look, retirement is comes in in many different forms. Every everybody has a different kind of version of what their retirement is, but are we we generally define it as. I'm no longer working for the man, right? So if I, let's say you worked for a law firm for yeah. 30 years and you, you know, and you worked hard and then they had a big party for you and they gave you a gold watch and they said, you're done. You, you don't have to, you're not commuting into Boston anymore. You're not traveling to overseas anymore. You're not doing, you're not, you're, you don't have, you don't work for us anymore. You're, you're, you're retired from our firm. Now, you're a, law, you're a lawyer, right? And you like helping people and maybe you want to, I don't know, maybe you you just put your kids through college and you'd like to save a little more money or whatever, whatever the whatever. Well, the you, you, ha you have a professional pursuit that you want to keep on pursuing, but you want to do it in a different context. Yeah, right? you want to do it at a different pace. You want That's to right. do it in a different location. You want right. to, you don't want to have all of kind of the, 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 the other like peripheral responsibility that comes with working for a firm, like having to be on time, having, maybe having people working for you, like yeah. that type of thing. So your retirement's going to look different. You're, so you, some people may say, you know, they, they, they retire and like, I'm never going to work another day in my life. It doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything. No, but, 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 but your point, your, your point is spot on. It's legit. I am not going to go anywhere that I don't have to go. And a lot of folks that put themselves in that position have a formula, right? And the formula is when I get to this age, I get this much money, right? Yep. And that, it doesn't get more. It doesn't get less. This is how much money I get. And they have it all figured out and they can circle on a calendar right now, 18 years from now, this is my last day on the job. I'm done. And then they walk out the door and they know, I don't have to worry. I'm getting this check forever. Yeah. And so that, that may be exactly what they do. Now, do they pick something up part-time? I don't know. But you know what? Do they Think do something it. that they've always wanted to do? 12, 14 hours a day? That's a lot of time to fill. Yeah. You know? And, and life goes in different directions. You know, some people retire with their spouse thinking that, you know, we're going to travel the world and we're going to do all these things. And then out of the blue, somebody mm -hmm. has a health issue, right? Or somebody's health issue is they pass away, yep. right? And then this person who says... I had planned all these things with this individual in my life to do all this, and now they're gone, and I got nothing but time on my hands. And they say, you know what? I, I don't want to sit around the house all day. Right. I want to go do something. You know, I don't want to play golf seven hours yeah. a day, five, six, seven days. Don't get a week. me wrong. I love I, golf, but yeah. the blisters, right? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. yeah. I noticed they, you're like your yeah, wrist oh, yeah, a little yeah, sore yeah, yeah. today, right? But yeah. They, but they want to do something, right? They want to do something. So, so yes. So, so get a job. Yeah. Give back. 
Find something that keeps you happy that you can say, look, I don't have to do this forever. And if I don't want to do it anymore, I quit. Well, there's that's that's the key, right? And that's the that's the you know that's kind of the place that these retirees that we try and put them in. We say, okay, you know, when I when we talk to somebody, we say, all right, I, the, I, we're ready to retire. And I'll say, oh, my next question will be, all right, what's your plan? What are you going to do? Well, I kind of want to work part time. It would be nice to have a little extra money. And I'm like, all right, do you need this money? Do right. I do I absolutely need it? So in other words, if you got sick and you couldn't work another day in your life. Would you have enough? Would you have enough assets and income to be able to to live throughout for the rest of your retirement? And if the answer is yes, then great. Then that's then that's great. If the answer is no, then 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 it's true. Then I'm then I'm not necessarily retiring from fully working. I'm retiring from the current profession, but I'm also gonna I, I need to to make this augment this income, yep. and I have a plan to do that. Right? I have a plan to do that. But remember, the this is you know your this particular is early retirement. So when someone retires early, we're making the assumption they're retiring before their full Social Security age. Right, which we've talked so, about on the show before. Right? Yep. So so if if let's say somebody's retiring at 62, and part of their 62, part of their retirement early retirement is I'm going to collect Social Security early, right? I'm going to say, I'm going to choose to take my Social Security early because I can, because right. I, it's, it's part of my, it's part of my plan. But remember at that point, I can only earn, I'm limited as to how much I can earn in order, without paying a, a significant tax on my, on my Social on, on my Social Security. So I can earn up to $17,400 uh, if I'm if I start collecting early Social Security of earned income, after that I'm getting taxed one dollar for every two. Right. So that's a that's another that's another factor of like this kind of early retirement is like well you know if you work another day if you if you still work then you're not really retired. I don't believe that. Well, and there's also an argument that, that that's from a sociological perspective that says that this idea that you stop working at age sixty. And never work again. That this this whole it's a relatively new invention, and it may also be a flash in the pan, yeah. right? I mean, there was a window of prosperity for this country where you had folks who were given the gift of a pension and service commitments and things like that, and then when they wrapped it up, they were able to do that. Right. But whether that continues into the future, but what was the I don't what know. was the life expectancy for people? And I mean, well, how often? That's a great people, point. Yeah. yeah. How how long do people live? Right. How long do people live? Like in the you know in the 1940s and the 1950s. Like, that's right. You know, it wasn't it wasn't now. Right. Well, you know, the, with the with the medical advances, yeah, it wasn't. 85 was probably 10 years, but maybe 75. I don't know, maybe less than that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you're talking like I mean, think about like the think about what what lifestyle was were like back then. So when somebody retires. At sixty, they're not. You know, right now, you know, we consider sixty very young. Like I, I consider, can, if someone's sixty, I'm like, yeah, you're like just getting going. Yes, like that's yes. that's really young from a retiree standpoint. Really young, right? Right. That's you right. Know, as opposed, and and again, no one knows kind of what the future beholds. But it, it, you know, when someone's retired, to me, that's really young. For, and and I look at it as like I need to make your money last until you're age 110. Yeah. So now I'm looking at 50 years. 50 years of generating income. That's a long time. That's a lot of generating <laughs> that's a, income. That's a lot of up and down market, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot All of right. volatility. All right. What's next on your uh, clickbait? Let me see. Let me take a look. Let me click it here. Oh, this is classic right here. All right. So so another, and again, let me forget my, what this was. Oh, the re, uh, five biggest money regrets Americans Ooh, have. Okay. So All right. So I'm going to let you, exciting. I'm going to let you guess this one. No way. So, I can't even do it. Yeah, yes, you can. But yes, the you show's can. not that long. We don't have time to do that. <laughs> All right, so what is the one really bad thing that you never want people to have, and you don't want to run these things up because oh, if you do, credit card debt, that's credit right, card that's debt, right. So my my big debt. regret is I'm carrying credit card oh. debt, which then goes back to my last point of you spending too much money. Yep. <laughs> you're spending more than you make. Yep. Your outcome is more than your income. That's because right. It's just math. Folks. I don't have an emergency fund. And I have credit card debt, which is so when I meet a new client, the first, you know, when they kind of give me like they, you know, they, they run their statistics and they say, all right, here's here's what we have. And, they, you know, they, so I'll give an example. So the client I talked to the other day, they said, well, we have no credit card debt. We own our house and we're both in our early 60s and we have sixty seven thousand dollars in the bank. And we're, you know, we're wondering about, you know, retirement and blah, blah, blah. And I'll say, OK. Before, if, if without looking at your credit card statement and without looking at your checkbook, without with knowing nothing else about how, like what you spend your money on, I don't need any, need, don't need any other questions. What I do know is this. I know that you live well within your means. Yep. I know because for two things. One, three things. One, you have, you've paid off your house. So in other words, whatever your mortgage situation was before you met me, 
you paid that down. Maybe you paid extra on your mortgage. Maybe you yeah, had you maybe threw money at it. Maybe or or maybe you you were fortunate enough to be able to put a lot of money down when you bought this. Or maybe you bought. Maybe you were just a shrewd buyer and you've owned this house for thirty years and you bought it for you know which we would consider a song back in the day. Yep, like so, yep. you bought it for thirty thousand dollars and now it's worth. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and yeah, you've taken money out to send your kids to college. I mean, but you were diligent and you paid your mortgage. And if you had a little extra money, maybe from a tax return or something, I throw a little money to my mortgage. So your your house is paid off by the time you before you retire. Great, you know, most people like they love that. That's like it makes them feel good. I own my house. The second thing is you have no credit card debt here, right? So yeah, you don't have the regret of having credit card debt because you know what you do? You spend what you, you don't overspend. That's right. You don't say, you know what? I can afford that. I'm going to, I'm going to run up my credit card. I'm going to, I'm going to buy things that I don't, I can't necessarily afford because. Well, we've, we've talked about this in the show and it actually goes back to one of the things that was on your earlier uh, comments on your, on your clickbait, which was your, 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 uh, your emergency savings, yeah. right? So you, you know, most people find themselves using a credit card because why? Because they're jammed up and they need to kind of use this as a way to float some some purchase, like a water heater, right? Like okay, so water heater, water heater shows up or beer for the Cinco de Mayo party. Different story. A different, that's not a waste. That's that's, that's an investment. It's not a waste. <laughs> it's a different story. So, but 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 that point of you know having some type of now that keeps you now you build up this point where the credit card doesn't even become an issue anymore. And you hear these people say, "Yeah, we have one, but we don't use it. Where is it? Well, I don't know. It's at the house somewhere, right? Or or even, or even shrewder, us. right? They use it." And then they pay it off every month because I get free frequent flyer miles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, so so because I use my credit card to pay for everything and I'm comfortable doing that. So my credit card bill every month is gonna be six, seven thousand dollars. But guess what? I got eighty two thousand dollars in the bank that I can that I know yep. I'm gonna be able to pay off my credit card with because and so by doing that, now I have I have a free trip every year. Every year I'm gonna fly somewhere in the continental United States for free yep. because I get my credit so card. So I'm rewarding my frugality. There you go. All right, so I have a crazy one. This makes absolutely no sense. Early retirement in a trailer sounds like a life of destitution. Unless, uh, well, the only trailer, the, there's only one trailer that I can, you know, like trailers, you know, usually equivalent like tornadoes or just kind of like, a, you know, a rough place to live, like, yep. you know, the eight mile analogy. Sure, yeah. So, <laughs> but there's one trailer that I would argue is like the totally cool trailer from a movie. D can you name it? Oh, the one from... Uh... You're going to get the weapon. Yes! Yes! Of yes! course it is. And we didn't rehearse that. There's always one or two of them. There's always one that you're like, oh, the trailer. That guy's but so look cool. at the view. But look at the. They're on <laughs> yeah. a bluff that, overlooking the yeah, ocean he's somewhere. He's on the beach. Yeah. He's so yeah. cool. Because yeah. you could do that, right? You put, you roll up into some spot like that in California and unload yeah. your trailer. And it's okay. It's they're fine. like, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. You know what? Hey, sure. You know what? Uh, lethal weapon cop, like crazy cop. You yeah. can go ahead and leave your trailer sure, right dump there. Dump your waste you right into the water here. We don't even care. You and your dog. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You get your big bad truck, right? Yeah. Yep, that's right. So I, I think that I think what the idea behind that 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 uh, that little nugget there, that little that little I, uh, uh, click, <laughs> clickbait nugget. I wish I is, didn't click it. Bait is, nugget. Is that what they're saying is you know you, if you're making a choice, right? You're saying to yourself, look, I can strip down every single thing that I'm doing in an attempt to live the life that I want to live in my early retirement, right? And I'm doing it, and I'm making a conscious decision to say, you know what? We're selling the house, we're taking the equity, and we're going to what I would say, we're not going to call it a trailer, let's call it a modular home, or even a mobile home, Make it stop. if you might. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe it's a, an Airstream. This, maybe it's an Airstream. This is a bad dream. Even if it is the most decked out, like, you know, like $400,000, like, converted Look, it says, van bus. It says it sounds like a life of destitution. Oh I would God. argue that... It very it well might be a life of destitution. destitution. Make I can no tell mistake you, about and, it. And you're way, sleeping in Walmart parking lots right, for way, half a year. If you're listening to this show right now, okay, if you're listening to this show right now, when you get home today, roll in the house and announce to your spouse, okay, <laughs> the love of your life. I bought right? a trailer. Announce to your spouse. Not even that I bought one. I've heard those guys on the radio, and I'm rethinking our retirement plan, okay? <laughs> and I think what we're going to do when it's time is we're going to downsize from here, where we've raised our children and where we actually have we just shelter, the pool. Yeah. shelter and, and warm water and a new hot water heater. And what we're going to do is we're going to move to a, 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 a mobile home or a trailer. And by the way, it says it on the radio, it's not destitution, okay? So it's a bit of a change, okay? But the point of this, the point of this uh, clickbait article is that if you're doing that in an attempt to make choices, to say, look, you know what? I'll do that because I'd rather spend my money on 
fill in the blanks, right? Travel, doing other things, or a lot of people jump in the RV and say, hey, honey, we're going to see the U.S. Yep. Uh, you know what? I'll give you that. I'll That's give you that. That's a decision. That's yep. a decision you're making. But, again, if you want to go that path, you know, you're, it's, you're, you're making some compromises. You're making, <laughs> you're making, you're making a few it's compromises. It's beyond compromises. It's, oh, there's a couple hey, of compromises. Hey, honey, guess what? I just bought the trailer. Uh, yeah, this house, our house, the one we're in right now, it's sold. We're closing at the end of the month. <laughs> if you could just sign yeah, me up. We bought, I bought this really awesome, fully blown mobile home, and we're everywhere we go. We're going to go make new friends. That's going to be great, <laughs> right? Yeah, first thing, I mean, we are going south. We're going to get the nice one. So we are going to go all the, we're going to go, we're going to go the, run the whole gamut. We're going to go to all the Carolinas, spend some time in both of the Virginias. And yeah, and think about that. Think both about of the Virginias. <laughs> think about just that kind of, so, and you're right. Maybe that's what people want to do. Maybe they want to, you know, they're like, look, life is short. There's a, there's a million things I want to see. And some people are wired for that. Some people are not. I, I don't, I think you're right. The, the compromise, and, and again, I'm speaking from my own. Hey, that's, my a, own. that's a decision. That's yeah. a decision. Look, there's, there, you know, if you're a camper and this is something you want right. to do, and, and, I've, and we've, we have friends of ours who are like, yeah, I would, I would blow this popsicle stand in five seconds, jump in a camper, and see the country. And, and roll. And I got it. Go ahead. It. RVing, right? It's, yep. all, it, it's a thing. It's a, it's a thing. Um, it is a thing. It is like a, you know, I'm, I'm. It's like, it's like going into the to the frontier. Open road. You yeah. can hear Willie Nelson in the background yep. as you're pulling out of the RV place. Yep. Most gypsies have fun wherever they are. That's, that's right. kind of that's, that's right. the. You got to think in those terms, right? So, so, so again, early retirement, uh, destitution. I don't know. It's a decision, but it, it's like every single decision we've talked about on this show. That's something that a this one especially. It's important that it's a team decision. Okay, and b. You know, you want to get in front of it, right? Because, you know, remember, if you're going to make this move, now, if you're going to make this move, what you're doing is you're closing the door, right? Yeah. Maybe not for good, but, you know, if the idea is, oh, we're going to get out of this big house, and then you do it, then you're going to find out, well, guess what? What if you realize you don't like it? Well, what, if you're in, what if you're in one of the two Virginias, yeah. and you don't care about seeing the other Virginia, right? What if you say, <laughs> I, I want to go home and take a hot shower that's larger than this, you know, this, this, right. this. I this, want to cook this. in a kitchen that's bigger than this. That's right. That's right. That's right. So you, you, you might want to you practice this one a couple of times. You know what? Well, you know what? I'm going to play the devil's advocate oh, on this Here we go. One. I'm, I'm going to take the so other side of somebody, this. Somebody could sell this to me. You know, so if a client came to me and said, this is what we're going to do. And I'll be like, okay, so once I stopped laughing and actually started taking them seriously because I have to, I'd say, look, let me, let me, let's just kind of, let's frame this out. And, and, and this is, and like you said, are, am I closing doors for good? Because someone may say, someone may sell it to me and they say, look, here's what we want to do. Both of us, we're 55. We have X amount of dollars in the bank. We're, we're young, knock on wood. We're healthy. Sure. We want to, we're, our plan is we're going to, for the next, pick a number. One year, two years, five years, however long, we're going to go for as long as we want, right? As long, we're not even going to put a cap on it. Kids right. are, you know, because the kids are on the other side of the country. We want to go do this crazy trip. We want to go like, a, you know, 180 days around the world. Like, they, we yep. want to do this. Sure. And, and, and then I'll say, okay, that's great. So let's, you know, it's hard to kind of put a number on, you know, they, maybe they've, you know, they're campers and they know. Like, they, we know how much it's going to cost. We, we can, we've oh, done, yeah. the, we've traveled the they country before. It all out, yeah. Yep. So we have an idea, of a concept of cost. And you know what? When we get to, you know, when we get to, when we reach that point on the calendar, maybe, or this destination, we may say, okay, we may want to settle here. Or we may find someplace. We may stumble. We, God, we love Albuquerque, New Mexico. Don't ask me why, but we love it we here. Fell right? love it. Fell love it. Fell in love yep. it. You know, after we watched Breaking Bad, we thought, you know what? This place probably isn't that bad, and it's not as bad as Breaking Bad, right? And so here we go. We're at Albuquerque, New Mexico. So that's 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 reasonable. I mean, so, somewhat reasonable. Yeah, but, sure. But if but as long as like you know, as long as you have a plan, and again, all retirements are are you you need to have a plan. Like the, you need to. And, and if your plan is we're going to drive until we till we can't drive anymore, that's a plan. Yep. And then these are the these are the the circumstances or these are the these are the things that could happen that could throw that plan off or well, could put you, you in a position. And, and you would do that for a client. You would say that's a great idea. That's a great plan. Now let's look at it in, in context, right? Yeah. So your point. And if that's you, your job, if, right? Your yeah. job is to kind of be that objective observer and say if you're if you're going to go that path, how long? How long can you do that for? Yep. What happens if that doesn't work out? What's your fallback? You know, yeah. have a, have a B plan. Just you start in case. asking questions like, okay, well, let's talk about kind of the basics. Like, all right, so let's. Talk, so you're retiring. So. 
first, you know, the first question people always like, with, especially if they're retiring early, is I need health insurance. Okay, yep. so let's talk about health insurance, and let's talk about a health insurance if I'm going to travel across the country, because that's that's something we're going to need to make sure it works yeah. in different yeah. places. Yeah, your coverage is good everywhere you go, yeah. because you may not, you know, you may not want to drive all the way back to Massachusetts to yeah. get your, you know, go visit your doctor, right? And you might, you might end up in the emergency room. Call me crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you, might, you might be out of network, and that could get expensive. That's, so you got to figure that out. That's so. true. What do you got? Any more over there? I got uh, one more, but I'll let you. I'm gonna hang defer. on a second. I, I, I got. Uh, Again, these are these are the internet clickbait ads that you see that reach out to you and scream, "Click here so we can tell you about some crazy." This one's. This internet. one's. This one is not so bad. This right. one. This one I will actually agree with because of and as we are kind of in this in this situation ourselves, uh, you're drowning in student loan debt. Ooh, ouch. So, okay. so, so that could be, and again, the, the, the title of the article is, is Financial Regrets, right? So you're drowning in student loan debt. That's a, that could be a regret, right? That yeah. could, you, could, you, could, you could see how that could be a regret because for whatever reason, you decided, hey, I'm gonna, I want to go to this university or I want to go to this school and I don't, you know, it costs forty thousand dollars, and I only can afford, or my parents or my family can only afford twenty thousand dollars. And again, this is like kind of back yeah, in the day. Making up the number, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. Um, and so now I have eighty thousand dollars of student loan debt that is sort of not unlike a small mortgage that I'm paying, and you know, and I, I, my, my degree was going to be in clinical social work, so I'm not going to make a ton of money. Right. So, and now I'm like, wow, this, you know, if I, if I didn't have this student loan debt or even, even better, if I, let's say I, I, I went to undergrad and then I went on to graduate school because I felt like I needed to get, uh, sure. you know, I have to get my MBA. I have to get, you know, I, I have to. Master's I wanna, in something. Yeah. yeah I, I had to continue. I had to get a master's in whatever clinical biological science or whatever that is going to, you know, position me better for the workforce. And maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but at the end of the day, it cost me an extra hundred thousand dollars, which I'm now carrying a student loan debt. So that could be a regret, and that's and that could be something that you know, you know, you, you know, as you're when you're making these decisions, and it's it's hard to kind of foresee what the future is going to yeah, be. It's hard to look a couple of moves ahead. <laughs> and, yep, I agree. But but the idea of of incurring student loan debt just because it's I feel like it's what I need to do. I feel like it's, you know, someone said, or, you know, and right. I, you get a lot of that, you know, someone said, well, you know, the only way you're going to get a job in this field is if you have an MBA. Well, maybe I don't go in that path, right. you know? So that's one of those decisions, you know, when you come to those crossroads, you say, look, do, you know, if I take on this debt, what is, what's my reward to this? What is, what's my potential down the road? And, and this, you could say the same thing for a kid who goes to medical school, right? So a kid's like, look, I'm going to, you know, I really want to become a doctor. I really want to go to medical school. But if you have to finance the whole thing, oh, yeah. that's, you're that's like, crazy you're gonna th you're money. You've got to think that through. you got to yeah. you look at all your options. Yeah. Speaking of regrets, I have a regret. I regret to inform you that we have come to the end of the show. It's the end of the, oh my God. Yeah, flew by. I know, clickbait, this is what they want. Click on those things, they draw you in. People are clicking on, they were, if, right now, if we were clickbait, they would have clicked on us like 15. All right, so remember, the point of today's show, in case everybody forgot, was John and I took, it, took one for the team, jumped on some <laughs> of those clickbait ads that draw you in with some type of, you know, look, click here to find out what the five biggest regrets in retirement are. Click here to debunk the five retirement myths. So what is your, your final word on that? What, was that of value? Uh, you know what? I would. Im I. I don't want to totally dismiss them. I don't want to generalize yep. and say that they're yep. all bad yep. or they're all good. I think it's. I think any time I've done it, my. I can only speak from my own personal experience. My, any time I've done it, there has been at least one thing. Or yeah. Usually, there's one or two things that you're like, ah, oh, well, that makes sense, or maybe it just reinforces something that I already know. Reinforcement, I and I agree with you. Every once in a while, you click on one thing, and you're like, you know what? That worth that. Trudging through all of that was worth that one that one little nugget. So, uh, be cautious. We're not uh, we're not uh, asking you to put your operating system in danger. But, and screen uh, time. Don't screen, spend too much right. screen not time. Too much screen right. time. And uh, take them with a grain of salt. And as always, they could bring up ideas that you may want to run by your advisor. Talk about them uh, with your advisor and let them give you their insight. Always let them weigh talk in. to your let advisor. Them weigh in always. Let That's them weigh what in their, their job is. Yeah. So I'm Jay Mars in Mars and Law Group. John Droham, Man for Financial Money in the Law, My FM. 101.3 here in the New England Bonsai Garden Studio with Christian. And uh, we're going to wrap this one up. And we'll, uh, we might not see her for a week or two because it's, uh, well, we might see her next week, Memorial Day. We'll see. We'll, 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 you will hear from us next week. That, right. that, Dying that, here, yeah, about, you, dine here about the parade. All, All right. right. Good stuff. See you next week. Have a Bye -bye. great week, everybody.